Hello and welcome to yet another sword related video. The focus of today's presentation will be a model that is well known within collector circles and that is the Bavarian 1788 uh, Cavalry Trooper Sword also known as the Rumford Chevaulégé Sabre. Bavaria was one of the strongest and numerous German states in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Initially bound to support the Austro-Hungarian Empire, because it was part of the Holy Roman Empire, Bavaria was to provide an armed force to fight for the imperial cause in times of war, which it did, but very reluctantly. Because it had traditionally been an ally of Catholic France for many years previously, it wasn't very active during the Revolutionary Wars and uh, quickly became neutral in 1792. Eight years later, in 1800, it became increasingly more involved with the French and acted as a buffer zone against Austria. That is until 1805, when the latter attacked Bavaria, who was now an ally to France. And this move gave Napoleon the opportunity to deal a crushing defeat to the Allies, and thus the states of Bavaria, Württemberg and Bad were uh, generally, generously rewarded with gains and or kingdom status because they were on the uh, French winning side. When in 1806 the Holy Roman Empire was replaced by the Confederation of the Rhine, the Kingdom of Bavaria, the newly formed Kingdom of Bavaria, was one of its strongest members. Much like uh, the Holy Roman Empire before it, the Confederation's goal was to serve French military interests and assist them with military support. In the campaign of 1809, Bavaria played an important role against the Austrians, but was then busy fighting the uh, Tyrolean insurrections, and in the invasion of 1812, it was part of six corps of the French Grand Armée. After the retreat from Russia and the big losses it suffered, and seeing that France would be ultimately defeated, uh, Bavaria, much like uh, Württemberg did a bit earlier, decided to, to turn against their longtime master in 1813 and join the coalition side. This move uh, prevented the revengeful allies from cutting up the kingdom and so uh, they kept all their possessions except for uh, Salzburg and Tyrol which were returned to Austria. But from then on uh, the Kingdom of Bavaria remained one of the strongest of the German states and was even granted a certain form of autonomy even when the German Empire was created in 1871. As being the second most important state after Prussia uh, the Kingdom of Bavaria was given the right to manage its own army. So uh, why exactly the nickname Rumford? Well this name came from Count uh, Theodore Rumford, who was the army minister and whose reforms reorganized uh, the Bavarian army in the last decades of the uh, 18th century. The Count was uh, quite an exceptional individual his real name being Benjamin Thompson, he was an American-born British scientist uh, and physician who had a keen interest in uh, thermodynamics. Prior to his journey in Europe, uh, he sided with the Loyalist forces during the American War of Independence and returned to England after the war, where he was noted for his scientific discoveries. And for that, he was uh, actually knighted. In 1785, he was uh, given the, uh, the crown's permission to enter Bavarian civil service. And it is uh, that when he became the aide de camp to the Prince Elector Karl Theodor. It was there that uh, appointed army minister or war minister, 
he reorganized and reformed the uh, the army. The result of which was uh, he did uh, the design of a small cannon, but he also did uh, new uniforms and equipment and armament, uh, such as the uh, Rumford Sabre system. But he also did a ton of things for uh, Bavarian uh, society, mainly the creation of the famed uh, English garden in Munich, and he was involved in social reforms, such as the Rumford soup, which was a soup for the poor. He also established the cultivation of the potato in Bavaria. He studied methods of cooking, heating and lightning, including the relative cost and efficiencies of um, wax candle, tallow candle and oil lamps. His work uh, resulted in improved fireplaces and chimneys and among his inventions were a, a double boiler, a kitchen range and a drip coffee pot. So in 19 and 1791, he was, uh, thanks to all his breakthroughs in science and reforms, uh, he was unsurprisingly named Count of the Holy Roman Empire. That is when he chose the name Rumford, because it was a place in, uh, in, uh, in the United States that was dear to his heart, and chose Rumford to be his title name. Back to the sword now. Uh, the cavalry trooper sword was designed for the Dragoons and the Chevalier regiments who, with two Cuirassier regiments, uh, made up the whole Bavarian cavalry, so it wasn't numerous. The design was rather simple yet efficient. It was a sword having an iron hilt, having two branches to protect the hand. The outer side of the guard had a curved thumb shell protection, reminiscent of Polish uh, Saab. The handle was composed of a blackened wood grip protected by a long back strap, whose uh, tiny pin button was completed by a lozenge shaped nut and had a pointed or uh, hooked edge. It had a standard but massive curved blade that was sheathed within a, uh, a leather sheet at first, uh, which was replaced in 1802 with a uh, sheet steel scabbard with two band rings. The scabbard's shoe or the drag is where you could find sometimes the uh, regimental marking such as in this example is uh, for the Dragoon Regiment number no. 1 Alpha Squadron and Sword number no. 84 while uh, resembling a lot like the drag of the scabbard for the Prussian model 1811 it's not quite the same and uh, it should not be confused uh, with the other. When he reformed the army, uh, Count Rumford established what came to be one of the most, uh, one of the earliest universal sword systems because the design of the uh, 1788 sword was not just limited to the cavalry but it was also implemented to the, uh, the officers of all trades. So uh, infantry officers, artillery officers, cavalry officers, but also to uh, infantry NCOs and even to musicians. As a result, there are a ton of variations within uh, the Rumford Saab, some having uh, short hilts, some having narrow or short blades, a bunch of different engravings uh, and king ciphers. Others had uh, ribbed, checkered, or even coarse wood grips. Uh, some officers' swords were made with uh, two, three, four, sometimes even uh, eight branches. But no matter how, uh, how much uh, it was customized, how many features there were, uh, all of these swords were considered to be part of the Rumford family type. This sword would prove to be unintentionally a pretty successful design because uh, it influenced many other swords that were created following the same concept. One such example was the French Light Cavalry uh, Trooper Saab of the years uh, 9 and 11 and whose form was made uh, similar to the uh, Rumford Saab. So as you can see, uh, both swords had uh, two branches covering the hand, long back straps, grips made of uh, wood but covered in leather. Uh, the two swords had a uh, massive curved blade and the uh, French sword would inspire itself a new uh, batch 
of uh, clones which were modeled uh, under the same uh, specifications. For example, the Dutch 1814 light cavalry Saab, also for the uh, artillery, and uh, this one resembles a lot uh, the uh, 1788 Bavarian sword. As you can see, the same features are found with the branches, long back straps, grips, and blades. Another example was a uh, very obscure sword, but it's the uh, Swiss 1810 Saab. This one made of brass like the French one, but then again, uh, the same concept of having uh, two branches, long back strap, uh, ribbed uh, grips covered in leather, and again, massive uh, curved blades. So definitely uh, there was something going on with the sword that uh, gathered the, uh, the attention of many other nations. Another that copied its design, uh, in fact copied it so well that it is uh, hard to tell which is which, was a Russian sword for the light cavalry. I think it was the model 1809. And as I said before, it was so, um, so similar to this one that it is hard to uh, identify which is which only through uh, markings on the blades or uh, quality of the fittings can you determine which is who. Despite being a satisfying sword, it still went on, uh, underwent changes. Uh, I've already mentioned the steel scabbard replacing the leather one in 1802. Yet in 1813, a new revamped uh, version took over and it was uh, created uh, having a handle which was made of a strong checkered uh, wood grip and the pommel cap was simplified and made completely rounded and that sort was given to the uh, chevalier units but also the uh, field de gendarmerie so the military police and the creation of this sword the 1813 uh, cavalry sabre uh, reflected changes that were already underway uh, within the bavarian army in 1811 the uh, Ragoon regiments were officially officially uh, converted as chevalier units, thus uh, removing them from uh, the list of cavalry units. And in 1813, uh, along with the creation of the new sword, a new regiment of lancers or ulans was raised and given that sword and lance. But also in that same year, 1813, a new sword model was created and issued to the hussars. And this was this one right over here. So uh, ultimately the 1788 and the 1813 uh, cavalry swords would be replaced by the uh, 1826 cavalry sab. But I suspect that the Rumford sab were still issued as a backup weapon to the logistics and artillery units until they were uh, deemed obsolete and uh, completely removed from service think in the second half of the 19th century, thus ending a considerably prolific journey in terms of a sword's life. So this concludes the video for today. Uh, I hope you've uh, learned a few things again about the sword. It's a very lovely and attractive sword, definitely a no-nonsense uh, weapon in terms of looks and handling with its uh, superb blade. If you have one at home in your collection and wish to uh, express your opinion thoughts about it, uh, you are more than welcome to drop a line in the comment section below. Otherwise, uh, I thank you very much for having watched the video. Don't forget to comment if you want and to hit the like and subscribe buttons. So uh, until uh, the next video, uh, stay safe, stay well and uh, take care.